To the NFL Draft and Combine now, we've seen some odds movement when it comes to the number one pick. Caleb Williams was minus 1,200 to go first. Now he's down to minus 1,000. Jaden Daniels is moving the other way, however. The Heisman winner was 13 to 1, and now he's down to 9 to 1. Daniels is also plus 105 to go number two overall. That's moved down from plus 180. We welcome our NFL draft and fantasy analyst, Field Gates, from the NFL Combine in Indy. The odds have moved for the number one pick. What do you make of this move, and what should betters take away from it? Yeah, Aaron, one thing that I've noticed over the years is that the uh, betting market specific to the draft is influenced by analysts quite a bit at this time of the pre-draft process. So as we head into the combine, you're hearing from more and more influential voices that are casting their opinions on these various prospects. And I think as people are speaking so glowingly about Jaden Daniels, it's starting to create perhaps the impression whether it ends up being uh, realistic or not that maybe Jaden Daniels has a chance to become that number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. So while I still would view Caleb Williams as a prohibitive favorite and the markets are still suggesting as much, Jaden Daniels has a bit of momentum after a terrific season this past year at LSU and he should have an excellent pro day at LSU later on this month. Plenty of speculation as to whether or not the Chicago Bears will trade the number one overall pick, but is there another potential trade spot early on day one that we should be paying attention to? Yeah, many believe that this is, of course, a three quarterback class at the very top. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots, who have that third pick, would be a team that some are wondering, would they ever consider a trade back? And part of the calculus is that if you have the third pick in a three quarterback draft, you are the least likely to secure the quarterback that you prefer the most. Meanwhile, teams like the Atlanta Falcons, the New York Giants, the Minnesota Vikings, amongst others, are going to be starving for the opportunity to trade up and acquire one of those three quarterbacks that we view at that very top of the heap. So. The Patriots at pick three, if I were in the seat of Elliot Wolf, the new personnel executive there that has the lead of this draft, I would be saying I'm just taking whichever of the three quarterbacks is left over. But I can imagine, even if the team is not going to entertain it, that his phone line is going to be burning up with potential trade up offers from various teams. All right, let's move away from the quarterback position for a moment. Wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. is a massive minus 700 favorite to be the first non quarterback selected. Most people seem to have him locked into the number four spot to the Arizona Cardinals. Any reason to believe Harrison does not go number four overall. You know, Joe, I guess when we're still, you know, eight or so some weeks out from the actual start of the NFL draft that you don't want to call too many things a certainty, but it certainly would be a <laughs> surprise if Marvin Harrison Jr. is not off the board by pick four. I sort of feel like Marvin Harrison Jr. has this very finite range of outcomes in this 2024 NFL draft. I do believe the three quarterbacks will go one, two and three. And I think the ceiling for Marvin Harrison Jr. as a result of that is fourth and the floor is probably pick five overall. Maybe there's some unusual circumstance that the Cardinals Cardinals prefer either offensive tackle Joe Alt or wide receiver Malik Neighbors from LSU. But I really do believe that Marvin Harrison Jr. stay in the green room on draft night in Detroit on April 25th is going to be a very brief one. He certainly feels like an excellent bet to be that first non quarterback taken. And field, we're still a ways out, but what's happening at the combine this weekend that better should be on the lookout at least for when new markets get posted? Yeah, Aaron, we're keeping an eye on which defensive player will be the first one taken in this year's draft. It's a very offensive heavy draft at the very top with those three quarterbacks, three great receivers, and a great offensive tackle and tight end. But Dallas Turner from Alabama has had himself a week here in Indianapolis. You know, it's been a whole year since Alabama had this terrific edge prospect and Will Anderson. They seem to kind of grow them on trees down there in Tuscaloosa. But Dallas Turner ran a 4-4-6 in the 40. He had terrific broad and vertical jumps. Very fluid athlete, has great length as well. Checks a lot of the physical boxes. He had 10 sacks this past season as the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. And while not the highest rated defensive player on my board, certainly wouldn't surprise me after a strong performance this week if we end up hearing Dallas Turner as the first defensive player on the board, off the board, perhaps as soon as the Falcons have pick eight maybe the Bears at pick nine field as always thank you so much for all your insight so excited to have you finally back here on the desk soon enough right when you get back from Indy but I'll see enjoy you guys being soon. out there